We're in the second week of October here in central New York State, and right now it's absolute peak black walnut season. So maybe you live in a northern state where there are black walnuts raining down like crazy. Uh, I keep my eyes peeled whenever we're driving. And periodically there'll be a tree right along the road where there's just carpets of nuts. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Andy, and I were able to collect 10 gallons, 15 gallons per minute of walnuts the other day in the husk. The challenge though is once you have all those nuts, how do you clean them and get them to a place where you can actually dry them and store them? It's one of the most flavorful nuts on earth, but until you get the husk off, uh, they're not really great for storage. So I'm going to show you the steps that we use. It's super mucky and grimy and wonderful and very quick. So let's talk about it. So what we found that works really nicely is we start with a metal garbage can. And I want to say a side note here. I made a video about this two years ago and I rewatched it recently and it took so long before I started explaining the process that I'm doing this again. So hopefully I get to the point in a timely manner. So we start with a metal garbage can. Uh, ideally it doesn't have holes. If it has a little leak, it's not a big deal. Into it, we dump five to 10-ish gallons worth of black walnuts in husk. They don't have to all be perfectly green. They can have maggots and worms in between the husk and the shell. That doesn't mean it's rotten and bad. The chickens will love this later on. We'll talk about that. But so we dump these in. So this is a few hundred nuts. And what we've found works incredibly well is we'll cover this with rainwater and we use a sturdy drill. In this case, it's a half inch chuck drill. You might be able to find one used. I bought this new for $70. It's useful in other ways. And this is a paddle whip or a paint mixing tool for five gallon bucket vats. This costs $9 from our local hardware store. This works incredibly well. If you get a sturdy one of these, but don't have a big drill, you can use a file and file this down so it fits a smaller drill. So we'll pause here and get this covered. This can be with rainwater, pond water, it does not have to be clean water. So you can see we actually use the same water over and over again. For this process of agitating and cleaning the husk off, it does not have to be clean water. We'll cover it with some murky water. I'll explain this part in a moment. A little bit thinner water. You want enough water, you'll get a feel as you do it, but you want enough water to cover them that once you start agitating, it, the nuts can move around pretty freely in there. So now we'll do the agitation part, which will abrade the nuts against each other and use each other's uh, shape to knock the husk loose. So my friend Robbie here has been helping tremendously and he is the, uh, the drill master on this event, so he'll get going with that part. So once it feels like this is something you'll get a feel for as you do it, we have a, a sense now that you run this drill for about three minutes, five minutes on full bore. You keep adding water if needed so that it, everything moves around. And the nuts hit each other over and over and over again and they knock the husk off of one another. What we'll do now is start scooping off manageable amounts of, it's a mix of nuts and husk and we use uh, you could use rainwater for this. We're not trying to get them perfectly clean at this stage. We're just trying to get a lot of the muck away so that we can see what we're dealing with. And what you can see is that, so some of them need another go. So we'll set these aside. You could have run the drill longer, or you could also just pinch that off sometimes. Um, but some of them that need a whole other round, we throw off to the side. Oops. 
and we'll give them another go. The ones that are relatively clean of the husk are now ready for the next phase, which is where they'll go into a crate. This can be whatever sort of device you want. You can get the idea of what this is. And it'll go into a tub of water and we'll fill this up a bit with uh, rainwater. So we'll continue that process. We'll dump out bucket by bucket from the tub. There'll be about 300, two to 300 nuts in this group. And by filling this with water, we'll look for the nuts that are clearly floating. Nuts that float on top of the water are almost certainly duds. They're empty or there's some sort of problem. You can skim those off and either send them to your chickens, throw them out into the woods for the squirrels to enjoy, uh, or put into the compost. The people in the past have been concerned, oh, what about all the walnut muck? Won't it kill all your plants? We find if we put it into a compost system, bulk it out with wood chips and give it time, we've not had any problems with jug loam issues in our gardens. But we'll take this and skim it off and give it to our chickens mixed with sawdust in about a month or so. Anyway, we'll continue on with that process and then we'll then come to here and agitate once more. That helps do a little more cleaning. Now we'll just do one last blast of water on these. Now we're not trying to sell these or have some very fancy cosmetic situation. If most of the husk is off and a lot of the discoloration is off, you should be good for storage at this point. So now we'll get them onto racks. So they've been agitated with the whisk and the drill. They've been agitated again in a little change of water. Washed off, it could be with rainwater if that's what you've got, or a garden hose or the jet stream is great. And now they're on racks, ideally in the sun. It's a little cloudy today, but it will work. And we turn them a few times throughout the day. Keep a little eye for squirrels and the light, although it's nice to share a bunch with them. So always plan to collect more than you'd enjoy eating yourself. So we'll let these dry in the sun for the whole day and then we have these simple boxes made out of uh, scrap lumber and half inch hardware cloth but you could use uh, door screens or window screens set on bricks. You can improvise with what you've got. We've made these where we can dry stack them in the garage uh, up on bricks and have a fan facing down through them if it's rainy or overnight and that helps dry them out. Uh, this was this represents about maybe three to four hours of processing, so it's doable to get a huge amount without a, without a lot of time. So hopefully this is useful for you. Robbie, thank you so much for your help. Thank you. And there you go. Thanks for watching.